Hey guys, today I'll be playing Sweetest Valentine, and this game may look all and sound like cute and whatnot, but it is not going to be from what I've read. It's currently midnight, but I can't sleep. Not before I finish wrapping up the Valentine's Day gift for him. It's all wrapped up nicely. Now it's time to write the card. I hope you like the cake I, a cake I made you. Made with love by... Oh, I can make a name. I'll just use a name. Made with love by Amy. Day one, one day before Valentine. <laughs> I wonder how I was going to take a dark turn. Wake up. Hey, Amy. Amy. Wake up. Sheesh, how long are you going to sleep for? We'll be late for school. I can't come wake you up every time. What will you do when I'm not around? Ha, ah, sorry Ichigo. <laughs> His name is Ichigo. I've never heard someone named Ichi Ichigo. This is my childhood friend and neighbor Ichigo. We've known each other for around 13 years now. Despite his looks, he's very dependable, and I catch myself relying on him all these years. He's like a little brother who acts like a mom, and I find that cute about him. You said I'm sorry since ages ago, but you slept like a log anyway. Come on, no more daily dallying. We only have 15 minutes before class starts. 15? At that, Ichigo drags me out of bed and hands me my uniform. Upon heading to the bathroom, I glance at the planner near my table. Right, it'll be Valentine's Day tomorrow. My plan for today is to give someone a Valentine's gift and ask that person out on the date tomorrow. The thing is, I was torn between choosing two guys. One is Ichigo, and the other is a classmate and a friend of mine. Of course, I had to choose just one. It took me a while to decide, but I finally made up my mind. I've already prepared a gift for him last night, too. And the one that I choose is no other than... Amy, you're spacing out. You know what? Fine by me, I guess I'll just leave you be if you want to be late so much. Oh, wait, I'll be ready in a minute, I promise. I left my house as soon as possible. I only have time to eat some bread on the way to school. <laughs> Not that cliche. Yet even then... You spent all night playing video games again, didn't you? I know you don't have a lot of friends, but sheesh. Ichigo's nagging me again. He's even insulting me. He's right though, I don't have much friends. I also play a lot of video games, especially late into the night, but he got it wrong this time. Actually, I was making... Either way, you need to sleep earlier, but well, I suppose it would be better if I kept it a secret for a while. You'll die before me at this rate. Now you're just being dramatic. Still, do you want that? I certainly don't. <sighs> okay, thanks for your concern I won't do it again. You better mean it this time, got it? Yeah, I'll try to. That's the spirit. Our conversation continued until eventually the two of us made it into the school. There are still many students walking inside the school gate with us, and that means we're far from late. We both went in and put our shoes in the lockers as usual, as we do, so I decided to ask. What's that about us being late, Ichigo? Well, you wouldn't get up if I told you otherwise. Come on, I've been waking up for years now. Threats are the best way to wake you up. Fine, I guess it did work in the end. Fortunately, we're in different classes. Ichigo is in class 3A and I'm in class 3C. So we're about to head off on our own ways after this. Knowing that, Ichigo looks at me, ready to say goodbye. I'll be off now. Don't doze off in class. Okay, mom, have fun at class. You too, Amy. And with that, both he and I walk away from each other. At class, some of my friends greet me as usual. I simply greet them back throwing some highs and hellos here and there with a small smile. But there's one person who manages to widen my smile, and that person is not, none other than... Amy, good morning. Good morning, Yuzuki. This is Yuzuki. I feel like I'm pronouncing her name wrong. <laughs> oh, oops, I skipped that. He's a popular student, if not the most popular student at school right now. And for good reasons, too. His grades are almost perfect, he's good at sports, he's handsome, he's rich... To top it off, his personality is killer too. He's kind and polite, not to mention generous. In other words, he's perfect. You sure? 
At least that's how I've seen him. I've been very lucky to be in the same class as him. Many people are going after him, including me. I know the competition will be tight, and I'll be honest, that worries me. At least Yuzuki and I aren't just classmates, though. We're study partners, and we're pretty close friends by now. Do you stay up, stay up late again, Amy? You're in a rush to get up, aren't you? How did you know? Of course I do. Your braids look messier than usual. Still as keen as usual, I see. It still looks good, but excuse me. Hmm? He reaches his hand out to my hair and lightly pats it. There. Sorry. There was a few strands of your hair with several meat cakes sticking out, and I couldn't help myself. Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks. Sheesh, that surprised me. My heart is beating hard right now. And I feel like some of my classmates are staring. It's really embarrassing. How do people do that without getting embarrassed? Oh, that's the bell. After saying that, Yuzuki went to his seat, which is not too far from mine. In fact, it's just a seat beside my seat. As he does so, he smiles at me. I'll be in your care today too, Amy. Let's work hard today. Yeah. The teacher soon walks inside the class and begins teaching us. I try my best to pay attention, but... In the end, I almost dozed off, and unfortunately, the teacher noticed. <laughs> I mean, I would hate if the teacher called me out. I've almost fallen asleep in class so many times, and I'm just happy that the teacher hasn't called me out yet. That would be so embarrassing. I immediately stand up, my drowsiness all gone. I'm sure you all know, you know an exam is coming soon. Yes, sir. Then if you're asleep, I take it as you already understood the material, so please read this question and answer it. Why are they so bent out of shape? I can only gloat about that. What are the three main types of plate boundaries? Darn, I already forgot what the answers are. Then I feel someone poking my hand lightly. Glancing down, I see Yuzuki's notes on the side of my table. Yuzuki must have slid it over when I was called by the teacher. Knowing that, I started reading from Yuzuki, Yuzuki's neat notes. It's convergent, divergent, and transform boundaries, isn't it, sir? I have never heard of that. Correct. I prefer if you didn't have to have to look over your notes to answer. But if it means you're actually paying attention and properly taking notes, so good job. Thank you, sir. I sigh out of relief before looking over at Yuzuki. He's giving me a thumbs up. Really now, I should be the one giving him one. Thanks, Yuzuki, I owe you one. Yuzuki only waves his hand before he whispers back. I'm just happy I could help. Yuzuki. Yuzuki calmly stands up, upon being called. No surprises there, he could easily answer any questions asked to him. Please answer the question to number 5. Again, I don't know the answer to that. I should really start paying attention in class. <laughs> he doesn't know. Huh? What's this? Yuzuki seems to be hesitating. What's wrong? Don't tell me. I apologize. I... I wasn't paying attention. Oh, is everyone in class gasps, murmur, or stares at Yuzuki in disbelief at that, including me? I can only look at him with my mouth agape. I don't think something like this ever happened before, as exaggerating as that sounds. Uh, well, look, even the teacher is shocked. <laughs> Pay more attention, Yuzuki. I'll let you off this time because you've always done well in my class. I suppose I'll, exp I'll explain this one myself. When class continues as normal, oh, well, class continues as normal, and Yuzuki sat down again. I looked at him and whispered, I'm sorry I can't help you even though you helped me. It's alright, it's not your fault. I wonder if he has something on his mind. Even the most boring classes, Yuzuki always pays attention and took notes. Or am I just imagining things? Actually, are you feeling okay? Are you sick? It's... Yuzuki trails off for a moment before he just shows me his usual smile. I'm fine, don't worry. Before long, school is finally over. The teacher warned us so we don't go home too late and that we should go home in groups. That's exactly what I'm planning on doing. Recently, people have gone missing over the past few years. The most recent case happened around a week ago. It could be a murder, kidnapping, or people running away. The police isn't so sure yet. Either way, I'm now outside of school, waiting for Ichigo. It's taking longer than usual. I wonder if he got caught by a teacher or something. Someone then bumped into me, someone wearing our uniform. He drops a small, plain paper bag in the process. Hey, oh, wait, you dropped this. I called out, but the guy just ran instead, as if intending to leave the bag to me. That was weird. Just as I thought, I suddenly felt a tap on my shoulder. Hey, Amy, did you wait too long? Ichigo, 
You surprised me. What's wrong? You seem jumpy. You're not usually so jumpy, are you? And what's that? This? A guy drops in when he bumped into me. When I called out for him, he just ran away. I didn't see his face clear to know who it was, though. What's that? That sounds suspicious. Maybe he said he really likes you and he's too shy to give it to you directly. He looked like he was being threatened. As if. How can you just leave this on my table? He could just leave this on my table if that's the case. But doing that is really cliched, so maybe he wants to try something new? Why don't we open it to see if it's true or not? Just speak on her. Even if it's not yours, we might also find out who it's actually for. You're curious, right? Right? I look at the paper bag. Now that Ichiko is as curious about it as me, I can't help but take a peek right in here and now. Looking inside, there's a box inside. From its appearance alone, it seems to be a Valentine's chocolate box you see in stores. But upon opening the box... What? Instead of chocolate, there's a dead bird. Oh my god. I was so speechless that I just stared at the carcass for a while. The poor bird's body is cut open and it looks like it's dry. It must have been killed at least a day ago. Then I realized that Ichigo hasn't said anything about this, so I turned to look at him. The expression on Ichigo as he stares at the bird is unusual. I've never seen his face like this before. He's really mad about this, that's for sure. Ichigo then forcefully took the box away from me, pulling the box's lid on top of it. You said the man bumped into you and left even after you called for him? I only nod. You couldn't see his face? I only know that he has brown hair. That's it. Don't go anywhere el anywhere alone for now. There's no telling what he might do. You know, there has been cases of missing people too these past few years. He might even be the culprit behind it. But he's wearing your school uniform, isn't he? Yeah, I'll be careful. I didn't think I didn't think I'd think of it at all times like this, but I thought that Ichigo actually looks cool when he's acting all serious like this. It makes me feel better somehow. Ah, oh, Amy, Ichigo. Hello there. Oh, hi. That surprised me. Luckily, it's just Yuzuki. Hi, Yuzuki. You two are about to go home, right? Uh, what's the holdup? People have gone missing, after all. You two should be careful and go home quickly, too. Well, we were about to, but some creepy guy dropped this. Ichigo then holds the box up, but didn't open it, which is a good thing. I didn't think Yuzuki would appreciate seeing that. We were being nosy, so we checked inside the box, and we found something we shouldn't in it. Huh? Something you shouldn't see? There's a dead bird inside. Pardon? You heard him right. Yuzuki's facial expression shifts into concern as he looks at the box. Why would he put a dead bird inside of a present box? To give it to someone? Make them think it's a harmless gift? That's what I think. The bad thing is, I think he's planning to give it to Amy. He just dropped this as he conveniently bumps into her. After all. Yuzuki stays silent for a few seconds as if trying to process this. Amy, this is crazy. He then puts his hand on my shoulder gently. Let's report this. I got my words right. Let's report this to the police. It may be a threat made towards you. It could even be related to the recent cases of missing people. Even if it wasn't that, it's still better to be safe than sorry. Yeah, I'm with Yuzuki on this. I'll accompany you all the way into your home. Not that I haven't been doing that all these years. I'll join you too. If you form a crowd, perhaps that man will stay away from you? You too. Thanks to them, I feel touched and safe for now. It's obvious that they're very concerned for me. But at the same time, but what if the worst comes to worst and he attacks you two? I also don't want them to be hurt because of me. Well, there are the three of us. If one once gets attacked or killed, at least the two of us could escape to ask for help. <laughs> okay, man. I mean, <laughs> while you're not wrong, let's just hope it doesn't come to that. I'm just kidding. Besides, I'm not as weak as I look, you know? I can't confirm he's actually learning judo. He even won some tournaments in the past. He did? Yep. Been at it since elementary school. Are you underestimating me, Yuzuki? Just because I'm cute doesn't mean I'm weak, you know? Well, you sure are full of confidence. Oh, I don't mean to look down on you. I'm sorry if it comes as such. I find it impressive, though. And now I feel a lot safer knowing that you're learning judo. Thanks. You can definitely count on me. 
So let's go now before it gets any darker outside. Okay, who gives a dead bird? Is it one of is it Yuzuki or Ichigo? After paying a short visit to the police, the three of us went home. Let's just hope the police will do their job properly. I'm sure they will. Let's have faith in them. I don't know, but the way that one policeman looked at us before seemed like he's looking down on us. Well, there's been missing people around here. I'm sure the police have been busy. Ha, <sighs> busy. They called me in and interrogated me for no reason a few weeks ago. They're definitely not busy. They did? Oh yeah, that happened. It was really weird. Are you sure you didn't do anything? Are you down me, Amy? Ouch. I'm your childhood friend, you know? All I'm saying is, if they have the time to do that, then they should have the time to protect Amy. I'm just worried about Amy here. I won't be around all the time to keep an eye on her after all. Don't worry, by the time I'm home, I'll lock the door as soon as I can. And what if he breaks the lock or breaks the... Oh, breaks the lock or breaks through the window? Then I'll ready a knife near my bed or something. I think a bat would be more effective, but... Well, your parents would know by that time, so you'll be safe. I hope. I'm sorry, did I say something I shouldn't? Nothing like that, it's just... My parents are always away from home. They're very busy. So are mine. All well, my parents are listed missing about three years ago. Ah, uh, I remember. We are about 14 at the time. The day Ichigo's parents went missing, he seemed so down and depressed for quite some time. I think he has moved on. Or at least, he tries not to let it bother him too much. Oh, I see. I apologize. It's fine. It's not like you knew beforehand, right Ichigo? Yeah, I don't really mind. Before the conversation gets too dark, let's change the subject, yeah? I've actually wanted to ask you something, Yuzuki. Me? What is it? I remember you used to go to school and back with a car, but even walking instead these days. Why the sudden change? Now that you mention it, I'm curious about that too. That? I just feel like I should be more independent. Whether I like it or not, my parents won't always be there to take care of me after all. Oh, taking initiative, initiative huh? That's admirable in a way. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, but that's not the only reason. In fact, the main reason is because I wanted to accompany a good friend of mine. He used to walk alone, and I just thought that he might be feeling lonely. Oh, what happened to that? I'm not sure why, but he told me to leave him alone for now. So here I am. Ah, huh, I wonder who his good friend is. Yuzuki has always been friendly to almost everyone. It'll be hard to guess. And I began to wonder if that's the reason why he made that mistake during class this morning. Oh, hey, sorry to interrupt, but we're here. Looking forward, I see both Ichigo's house and mine on site. Ah, time sure does fly. I suppose this is where we separate from each other. At this moment, I remember something. Wait, two boys freeze when they heard me, then proceed to look at me curiously. Yeah? First of all, thanks for accompanying me back home. Second of all, with everything happening, I almost forgot about giving the Valentine's Day gift. And maybe someone threatened me, but that won't stop me from my Valentine's Day date plan. Since I left the gift at home, I'll have to ask him to come inside with me. Oh, you have to choose someone. Mm, Ichigo Yuzuki. Should we go with a childhood friend or some guy we don't even know if he likes, if he likes me or not? Eh, maybe we'll go with Ichigo. I don't know, I feel like Ichigo is crazy. <laughs> so let's go with Yuzuki. I'm honestly afraid that Yuzuki will reject me, but you won't know until you try, right? Yuzuki, can we talk inside my house for a while? Hmm? Is it something you can't talk about right now? Well, I appreciate it if we talked alone, just the two of us. After all, Ichigo might make fun of me if I openly tell him. I smell something spicy here. Something spicy? I don't smell anything, though. Maybe you should just leave and go home, Yuzuki. Your parents would get angry at you if you got home late, right? Shut up, Ichigo. This is between me and Yuzuki. Maybe she wants to... Come... Oh! <laughs> I quickly muffled Ichigo's mouth before he could say more. Luckily, Yuzuki is pretty dense, as he only tilts his head with confusion. Ah, get off me. Fine, fine. I'll leave you so you two can have your quality time together. Have fun! Huh? Why does he seem so down? Should we get inside then, Amy? Oh, yeah, it won't take more than 15 minutes, so don't worry. I bring Yuzuki inside with me. Even though he's with me, he's still acting polite when he enters. Excuse me. 
Just come on in. Didn't I tell you my parents are always away? It's just me here and no need to be so formal. I suppose you're right. Sorry, it's just a habit of mine. And why did you bring me to your kitchen? Well, actually... I opened the refrigerator and pulled out a gift I made for Yuzuki, then handed it to him. My thought was beginning to feel dry and my heart is thumping loudly. What I feel right now is a mixture of nervousness, fear, and excitement all at the same time. Here, I remembered that your favorite dessert was lemon cheesecake, so I made one for you. Amy, thank you. I do love lemon cheesecake. That made me sigh out of relief. I don't know what I'd do if I remembered it wrong. But that's just one issue over. The other one is... Yuzuki, actually... That... It's actually a Valentine's gift. Oh, that's right. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, isn't it? Does he even get what I mean by that? Oh, well, guess I'll have to spell it out for him. Yes, by giving that gift, I'm saying that, um... I like you? More than just a friend? Oh. I see. I understand. Why is his reaction like that? He me. I'm sorry. The truth is, I already have a... I love you too! Huh? Huh? You do? Yes, it's true. I honestly didn't think you feel the same way. That's what I sh- uh, That's what I should be saying. You're perfect in every way, pretty much everyone likes you, you're also friendly with almost everyone. I was hesitating because I thought you'd reject me. I mean, I'm just a normal girl with nothing to boast about. I think you have some things to boast about. For example, you're so sleepy that you always doze off during class. How is that something to boast about? I find it cute. You're like a cat. I also think you cook well. You're caring of others. And you're sometimes brave enough to say what's on your mind instead of putting a pretense. Sheesh, okay, I get it. You're embarrassing me with all those compliments now. Ugh, well, that expression you're making is adorable as well. I said cut it off. Anyway, since uh, tomorrow is Valentine's Day, I was wondering if you'd want to go on a date with me after school. Oh. What's this? Yuki suddenly looks troubled. What's the matter? Do you have something to do at that time? Well, actually, I've been planning to run away from home for these past few days. Huh? Yuzuki then pulls out a train ticket scheduled to go the day after tomorrow. But why? I just felt very suffocated at home. You remember how I said I was trying to be more independent? Well, it's for this reason. I see. Even though we just got together. <sighs> Something happened, by force. Oh, I didn't mean to stop you from leaving if you really do feel bad at home. I'm just... a bit sad. Now I get it. It just shows that you care for me and I appreciate that. Because of that, I was thinking that I want to spend the rest of the day and tomorrow with you. Huh? Would it be asking for too much if I stay at your house overnight? What? What are you saying? Of course, I'd be more than happy to let you stay. Thank you very much, Amy. I'll be in your care. Mm-hmm. I still can't believe that just happened. Who knew we escalated this quickly? Aside from the fact that someone gave me a dead bird and Yuzuki will be leaving, today is just miracles after miracles. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow now. I wish tomorrow would just be as nice. Day two. He's going out with you by force, though. I don't know what happened. I don't know if she manipulated or something, but... Mm. Alrighty. The first thing I smell when waking up is the faint scent of curry. I wonder if it's my mom cooking, but I remember that she's still away in Osaka. That's right, Yuzuki is supposed to be sleeping on the futon beside my bed, but why is it empty? Only then and there did I connect the dots. Yuzuki, he's cooking, isn't he? So I tried to get up. I notice that my head stings. Not only that, but my entire body too. When I look at myself in the mirror though, everything seems fine. What the? It must be my imagination. Thinking that way, I nonchalantly leave my room to check up on the kitchen. And sure enough, I see Yuzuki in the kitchen. He seems to be chopping some vegetables while also curry cooking the curry. Smelling the curry from the nearby now makes my stomach mouth drool. Not stomach drool. Tasted his cooking in our home economics class. It tastes heavenly. He really can do everything, can't he? Good morning, Amy. How's your sleep? It's good. Of course it's good. We were sleeping in one room after all. I'm not going to say that out loud, though. Even if we're lovers, it's still embarrassing. I'm glad to hear that. Ah, and about that curry. I noticed that you had 
have a leftover of it. It hasn't gone bad yet, and I simply thought it would be a waste to throw it away. Now I'm reheating an apple, adding a couple of ingredients so that the curry will be enough for the both of us. I hope you don't mind. Why would I mind? I should be the one thanking you. Even though it's leftover, I'm so excited to eat it. Whatever it is you're cooking, I'm sure it'll turn out perfect. For some reason, Yuzuki suddenly stops chopping and just looks straight at me. Thank you. Then he just goes back to chopping potatoes like it's nothing. Who's that all about? Is he mad I'm not helping him out? Um, Let's help him. Yuzuki, are you mad that I'm not helping you out? If that's the case, I'll lend you a hand. Oh, you will? <laughs> Why do I want her to help me? Yeah, I'll help you chop while you keep an eye out on the curry. No, instead, could you please fetch me the onion? Huh? Uh, well, sure, wait a second. I quickly grab an onion from the fridge before I hand it out to the Yuzuki. However, instead of grabbing the onion, he grabs my hand, pushes it down under the chopping board. Meanwhile, his other hand grabs a cleaver from the kitchen counter. Yuzuki? What are you? Without answering me, he brings a cleaver down onto my wrist. Oh, the pain is unimaginable. But for some reason, my voice won't come out. When I dare myself to look at my hand, I see the cleaver stuck midway through the wrist. Another pain, and I see the cleaver getting pulled out. Before he strikes down again, he keeps doing it over and over. By the end of it, I can't feel my hand anymore. I feel my consciousness fade me away. But before it happens, I briefly hear and you see Rizuki. Thank you for lending me your hand, Amy. I will make sure that your suffering won't end in vain. You are reflecting on your actions, haven't you? Uh, what's that? You're sorry? Good. That's all I want to hear from you, Amy. You can sleep now. The pain will disappear soon. Good night, Amy. The hell? Bad end one. <gasps> what if Amy is a dumb no one? Well, we don't know her hand. Alright. Okay, this time we're going to let him be. We're probably just overthinking it. He was just staring at me, that's all. Yuzuki puts the chopped potatoes into the curry, then looks at me again. By the way, Amy, are you planning to go to school today? Yeah, you'll be going too, right? No. Let's skip for today. Huh? Yuzuki has always been a good student so far. He has almost an, he has an almost perfect class attendance. I never thought he purposely skipped like this. But remembering what happened yesterday, it's pretty understandable. Well, you'll leave by tomorrow. Then let's just skip and spend the day here. Thank you, Amy. Oh, the curry seems to be done. He grabs a spoon from the kitchen counter before scooping some of the curry up. And he starts to pour the spoon towards my mouth. Would you like to have a taste, Amy? Of course. Ow. Right. I forgot to tell you that it's still hot. Not in that, Yuzuki pulls the spoon back and gives it a gentle blow. Jeez, it's like we're a married couple or something. Here. It should be colder now. Thanks, Yuzuki. And of course, it tastes wonderful. What do you think? All good. Wait, let me grab the plates for us to eat. Breakfast at home, Yuzuki? Who would have thought? It's usually just me eating breakfast alone. We're together with Ichigo. Speaking of Ichigo, he usually comes to pick me up from school. I don't think he ever misses a day to do that. So why isn't he here today? Whatever, it's not like I'm going to school anyway. It's better if he doesn't come at all. So I can enjoy my time alone with Yuzuki. Just the two of us. They haven't come out. Since last night, they're still cooped up in there. Uh, disgusting. <laughs> so Yuzuki is that kind of person after all. Should I just barge in and tell her that he's... No. She might get sad. I don't want to make her sad. Maybe I should use him. Yeah. And then I'll be the one to console her. Right, I knew this one was crazy. That's it. Heh. <laughs> after we ate, the two of us spent our time reading. The second Yuzuki took a look at my book collection, he went into reading in no time. I do remember him saying he loves reading books in his spare time. Well, I don't really mind, spending time like this is pretty comfortable. What I didn't expect was the book that he chose. 
He seems to be immersed in it too. It's pretty shocking. I would imagine him liking non-fiction books or poems, but I guess I was wrong. Eventually, Yuzuki looks up from the book and sighs. Seeing that, I put my book down to talk to him. So, how is it so far? The book is rather entertaining. Which part are you on right now? Right now, I'm in the park after the students left the building one by one and started killing each other. 38 students are still alive by now. Huh, I think that's exactly where I left off. Is that so? Then how about reading it together now? Oh, that sounds like fun. Let's do it. Two of us sit close to each other until there's practically no gap between us and starts reading. Our reading pace is pretty much the same, too, so neither of us interrupted the other. The other. Eventually, I heard Yuzuki sigh. If I were the main character, I don't think I'd be able to trust Noriko that easily. Right? Me too. I feel like they're too naive. Someone might look and act innocent, but there might be a monster inside. Ah, uh, are you perhaps referring to yourself, Amy? What? No, nothing like that. But I really didn't expect you to be distrustful. You always seem so kind and trusting of others. Like you said, someone who's so innocent could very well be hiding an ugly part of themselves. And you knew that better than anyone, don't you? Seriously, why do you keep insisting that? Why else? Because I know full well what you did. I knew that you were suspicious. Huh? Tell me, Amy. Acting all innocent, like nothing happened. Are you truly happy with this? What do you mean? Stop pretending like you don't know. You never loved me in the first place. It's only because I showed you some kindness and you lashed onto it. When it turns out I wasn't able to give you what you want, you lost it. Someone will, someone will leave me once again. That's what you thought, right? And what are you talking about? You don't know? That's funny. After all, you... What happened? Who? Oh, looking for someone? Ha, ah, sorry to sneak up behind you just like that. So, like I was saying, are you looking for someone in Class 3C? As far as I remember, you're Haruto from Class 3B, right? You know me? Uh-huh, I know almost everyone from Class 3A to 3, 3E. So I can probably help you if you're looking for someone. Then, do you know Yuzuki, right? Who doesn't know Yuzuki? I take it you're looking for him? Yeah. Then, I'll let you join in on the goosey go juicy gossip on him. Gossip? See, so it all started yesterday after school. My childhood friend, Amy, Yuzuki, and I were walking back home together. And then, just as they were about to split up, Amy asked, suddenly asked Yuzuki to go inside her house together. And while I'm still there too, I'm nerve of her. I know she has a crush on him, but it wouldn't hurt to be more tactful, right? And here comes the juicy part. By morning, the two of them never left Amy's house. Can you believe that? They even skipped school together. That's... Ah, I wonder what they're doing since yesterday. It's very suspicious, right? Hey, aren't you curious too, Haruto? Maybe Yuzuki is still in Amy's house even until now. Oh well, it's not my place to meddle. If Amy is happy, then I'm also happy. I hope we can find Yuzuki. I'll see you later. Yuzuki. Who the hell is this guy? Okay, something weird is going on. What was I doing again? Looking at the window, apparently it's already evening. That's weird. The last time I was reading a book with Yuzuki, didn't I? Yeah. I have to see him. I have to make sure that he's fine. Upon entering my living room, I see Yuzuki sitting on the sofa. Is he still reading? He's been reading that book all day now. Yuzuki? Yuzuki, hey, say something. Ah, oh, Amy, are you feeling better? Feeling better? Yes, yeah, suddenly you collapsed earlier. You were still feeling unwell, perhaps you could show, go see a doctor? No, there's no need for that. I'm perfectly fine, see? Are you really sure about that? Yeah, don't worry. Then, at least let's have you rest in your room. Come, I'll escort you up. Zuki puts his hand gently on my back as he walks me back to my room. I waste no time to lay on my bed. Seeing that, Yuzuki gives me a, curse, a look of concern. You're better, up, Amy. How about I open the window to let in some fresh air? Um, let's make sure to save this part. Um, 
Let's just let him be. Zuki opens the window slightly in my stead, and cold wind makes its way in. Even though it's winter, fresh air is still fresh. Please rest up. I'll make you some soup. After Yuzuki left, I just stared at the ceiling for some time. I closed my eyes, and by the time I opened it again, I feel a vibration in my pocket. Someone's trying to call me, it seems. Looking at my phone, I see 20 missed calls from this morning until fairly recently. It's all from Ichigo. I can only sigh at that. I know he means well, but sometimes he can get way too nosy and overprotective. So I decided to give him a call. Amy? Oh, that didn't take him long. What do you want? Huh? You didn't even leave your house all day and skipped school. Of course I'll be worried. Hey, are you sick or something? Kind of. Yuzuki just lets you be? He's with you, right? It's nothing like that. Look, just shut up and mind your own business. We're only childhood friends, that's all. So don't get cocky. Amy, I'm sorry. Hearing that Ichigo has nothing else to say, I decided to cut the call off. Almost immediately after, I see Ichigo calling me again. To which I responded by throwing my phone off somewhere. Zuki comes to her because I hear his footsteps walking towards this room. Amy, what's wrong? No, sorry, it's nothing. On second thought, do you want me to accompany you? That'd be nice. Zuki nods at that before he sits beside me. Amy, truthfully, there's something I want to ask. Hmm? Since, since when do you start falling for me? Uh, what kind of question is that? No, sorry, I was just curious. Well, my feelings just gradually grow for you over time. At first, it was just a normal attraction and admiration. You're good looking, your grades are perfect. I did feel envious at one point. And when you started talking to me, I began to notice how nice and humble you actually are. Despite your achievements, you never brag about yourself and you're always supportive of others. You even started helping me study. Even though I could be hard to deal with sometimes. There aren't that many people who care about me in the first place. And the rest is history. I see. Um, since I've shared why I felt for you, how about telling me why you love me? Hmm, do I really have to? Please? Yuki lets out a sigh of defeat before he looks at me. The reason why I love you, well, I just love you the way you are. Or at least, that's what you wanted to hear, isn't it? And then the dread suddenly wraps around me. In the first place, you never loved- I- Yuzuki never loved you. No. Shut up. Amy. Everything is just delusion. Shut. Up. I tried telling you so many times, but you just kept blocking me off. Will you continue to do that, or will you actually try to face the truth now? Run away or face the truth? Let's face the truth, because I want to see what happens. But if I do, then you'll- Disappear? I know. Or perhaps it's better this way. You have committed something unforgivable after all. No matter how hard you like to try to look away or run, it still won't be erased what you did. Yuzuki then puts his hand on my cheeks gently. Look there. I gulp before obliging him and looking over to where he told me to look. Oh, he killed him. That's right. Last night I... Yes. By giving that gift, I'm saying that, um... I like you, more than just a friend. Oh, I confess to you, Yuzuki. I see. I understand. Amy, I'm sorry. I'm prepared for rejection. I can always try to get close and win his heart, but... The truth is, I already have a lover. Huh? Yes, I'm sorry for keeping his secrets from you. His cheeks redden, his facial expression soften. It's a face I've never seen before. But... I never see him dating anyone. And there's never a rumor about him dating, too. Does he hate me that much to the point of lying to me? Oh, uh, with whom? I made a promise not to tell, so I can't tell you. Can't say. Liar. But I suppose I can tell you this much. The day after tomorrow, I'll be going with my lover to Tokyo. What if his lover is Ichigo? <laughs> Please keep it a secret. And with that, I also want to thank you for your kindness up to this point. Now you're telling me... That you'll leave me behind. Oh. Uh, pardon? You're so cruel. Do you really hate me that much, Yuzuki? Uh, I'm really sorry, Amy. I don't hate you, I promise. Uh, I don't mind treating you some more tomorrow as an apology. No, that, that'll be useless. Amy? Don't leave. 
I saw someone come at me with a knife, I would run and scream and yell. Amy, please calm down and put that knife down. I'm sorry. Okay, let's just have a conversation. Have a conversation? And then what? You'll still leave me in the end? Amy, please. I don't want to hurt you. Then stay with me. I can't, Amy. Can't you understand that? Then I'll make you stay. Amy, please, just let me... Ugh. Oof. The last thing I remember was Yuzuki grabbing a bottle from the side before he swung it on my head. Did he bleed out? That's right, I... I never felt... I never felt it feeling so painful as last night. And so, yesterday night I killed Yuzuki. I thought doing this would be better than letting him go, but I was wrong. Yuzuki, I'm... I'm sorry. So, so sorry. Day 3 Aftermath. Oh. Two years ago. Oh, two years ago. The results and rankings of the midterm exam is already out. And of course, my place in the ranking is average. Rank 42 out of the 124 first year students. It is pretty good. But who remembers the one at the 42nd rank anyway? No matter how hard I try, this is the best I could do, I guess. Uh, maybe it's finally time to kiss my dream goodbye? Of course, the one who ranked first is Yuzuki. We went to the same school since elementary up until now. I guess he still is impressive as ever. Are you the one dating him, Aruto? Must be nice. Born in a rich family, having a bright mind. It's like, he's a prince and I'm just a normal peasant, a mob character. Being the mob character isn't all that bad, really. I sometimes wish my life was just more entertaining. Oh, the bell. I'm sure today, too, will end up just as usual. Or at least, that's what I thought. But what's this? I was just reading a comic near the school storage, but Yuzuki suddenly shows up and I instinctively hid. And he seems to be practicing volleyball? Ugh, he sucks at it, too. Since it's starting to get painful for me to just watch, I decide to leave my hiding spot. <laughs> Is that bad? Hey, Yuzuki? You're Haruto? Huh, so you remember me. That surprise. Anyway, do you need help with that? I point at the ball he's holding because Yuzuki is... Cousin Yuzuki didn't chuckle nervously. You saw what I was doing? Yeah, I never knew you suck at volleyball. From what I remember, when we were at middle school, you seemed decent at it. Ah, uh, no use I need, I suppose. Please keep this a secret. Actually, I'm very bad at sports. Seriously? Well, I know you're not the best at it, but you don't seem that bad at it. That's because I practice. Whenever we have PE, I always look at what we'll be doing and practice it ahead of time. No, not just PE. I also do it for other subjects so I don't have to worry about my grades. I mean, that's normal, right? That sounds tedious. I just don't want to look like a fool in front of the others. Again, please don't tell the others about this. It's embarrassing. Huh? So he's not perfect after all. He has a lot- he has to put a lot of effort into his work. I like me who just give up themselves for the average. And er earning the top spot in almost every ranking makes sense now. That's impressive. I guess I've always been wrong about him. But anyway, I see a golden opportunity here. Want me to teach you sports then? You will? Yeah, but not for free. I'll teach you a sport, and in exchange you'll teach me the usual school subjects like math and social studies. Ah, oh, that sounds perfect. Then we have a deal. I honestly don't know why, out of all people, he agreed to let an average guy like me teach him. But that doesn't matter. Maybe now I don't have to abandon my dream after all. Ever since that day, we made up for our studying sessions after school. It's actually helpful for me. Yuzuki has a natural talent as a teacher and his explanation is very easy to understand. However, I'll admit I'm not doing that good of a job at teaching him. The fact that he's not as fit as I thought doesn't help. Even so, he keeps agreeing to me anyway. It might be lonely, or at least that's the feeling I get when I see him. A week passes and I say we're friends now. Our study, study together session is still going, from, 
bad, we usually use the school's storage because almost no one goes there. Well, I thought Amy said that they were study buddies. So what the hell is going on here? Dookie cares too much about how people will think of him sometimes. This is something I've noticed after a while. Not that I mind too much. I don't really like being in crowded places after all. Today is the same as usual. We're supposed to meet in the storage yet again. But he's late. I wonder what happened. Last night, he did say he's going to have an all-nighter to practice. Ah, Haruto. Sorry, I've kept you waiting, didn't I? Yeah, you did. What's up? Well, he rolls his sleeve down, showing me his bandaged left wrist. Let me guess, you trained too hard last night. Yes. Let out a long sigh at that before I pull my comic out. Well, that's that. Let's just hang out today. Will that be alright? What do you mean? If I force you to train anyway, your hand's going to break off. Just sit down beside me and enjoy the day off. Rest up, Yuzuki. Uh, alright. So tell me, why did you push yourself? Um, because I don't want to annoy you. I thought if I practice before you teach me, I'll lessen your burden. Huh, then you're just doing the same thing as you were doing before. I admire your determination, I do, but you take it too far sometimes. And look, you're getting way too self-conscious. It's not entirely your fault, I admit that I'm also bad at teaching. But isn't that the point of this whole studying together thing? We're bad at what we're doing, so we're learning how to get better. I suppose you're right. Despite his answer, his expression tells me he's not convinced at all. I let out another sigh at that and decided to ask him something. Yuzuki, why are you so afraid of being bad at something? I know you mentioned not wanting to look like a fool, but is that really all? Well, to be honest, my parents are very strict. My mother is a doctor and my father is a teacher. What would others think if I, of them if I perform badly? Uh, even if your parents are smart, they're not smart enough to raise their child properly, it seems. That would embarrass my parents greatly. They punish me, so they punish me whenever I don't have good grades and whenever I misbehave. You know, behind all that punishment, my parents also mean well. Absolutely not. But... Well, anyway, that's why I'm afraid of making mistakes. Okay, I get it. You want to avoid being punished by your parents, huh? Do your parents even know that you can't do everything perfectly? No, at the very least, even your parents don't. Everyone else knows that nobody is perfect. You said that your parents only punish you whenever you don't have good grades, right? And I'll tell you, doing a tiny mistake won't make you have bad grades. Admitting your bad sports definitely won't ruin your PE grade. With PE, the teacher is usually kind enough to give you a good grade purely from your efforts anyway. And I know we really worked hard to be able to perform at least decently at that. The teacher should be able to see it too. What I'm trying to say is, you're not perfect at sports, but it's fine. I look somewhat surprised by it. Maybe he's not convinced yet? Well, I guess your parents' way of teaching must have turned you into a perfectionist, perfectionist as well. Setting your parents aside for a moment. I think there's a benefit to letting others know you're not so good at something. There is? Yeah. I'll be honest, before this, I always thought you seemed too perfect. Not just me, almost everyone I know thinks so too. So sometimes we feel kind of intimidated by you, you know? Like you're on a different league than us. Is that so? I never knew. But... That will explain some things. Yeah, so don't be afraid to admit your flaws and some mistakes. That way you'll get used to it and won't break yourself up for every little mistake you make. Plus, it'll make you seem more approachable. I get it. I'll try out your advice, Haruto. Thank you for telling me all that. I also feel better after telling you how I feel. Glad I could help. Oh. What's the matter? It's almost time for my part-time job. Man, time flies. Hi, ah, you work part-time? Yeah, I need to learn how to be independent to save up from now on. I'm planning to leave this small time to go to Tokyo once I graduate, after all. And it's not like my parents will feed me forever. <laughs> I see. Will you be going there by yourself? Uh-huh. So, I'll see you later? Haruta, wait. Can I come with you? Hmm? But how about your father? He'll pick you up later tonight. Right? I'll call him and let him know. Hey, hey, you know your house is pretty far away from here. You get tired easily, too. Are you sure about that? Haruto, you're too blunt sometimes. But I'll be fine. It'll be a good way to exercise, too. 
If you say so, just don't complain if your legs and the bandage tomorrow too. Yuzuki started to accompany me home since then. It only lasted for a few weeks though. I started I noticed people start starting to prevent Yuzuki nowadays, but probably he probably took my advice, or maybe that's just me wanting to believe that all my advice didn't go to waste. Either way, Yuzuki has been pretty busy handling his social life. He even forgot to come to our studying sessions. Eventually, I just stopped asking him to come. Which leads me back to square one. Here I am now, reading comics alone near the storage like I always do when I have nothing else to do. I'm happy that Yuzuki seems to be getting even more popular now, and yet, it feels lonely. I have other friends besides Yuzuki, of course, but spending time with him feels different somehow. I guess that prince managed to charm me too in the end. No, no. What the hell am I thinking? Even though I have my favorite comic right here, my mind drips off just like that. I need to focus. I've been excited for this volume to come out after all. Hmm? There's a pile of cardboard boxes in front of me and one of them just topples down. Is someone there? Is he hiding? What the hell are you doing, Yuzuki? Um, stop hiding and come here. Sit beside me. Alright. What brings you here? I was wondering why you stopped asking me to study together. I didn't do anything wrong, did I? That reminds me, I've always been the one asking for us to meet. When I stopped his self-consciousness, is probably acting up again. No, you're fine. I just thought you're busy. If you wanted to study together, you could have just asked me. I don't mind. I see. I thought you were angry. Angry? Nothing like that. Actually, I'm pretty proud. I see people are starting to approach and befriend you. What do you think? It's nice, but... It's rather chaotic. One group invites me out, and another also invites me out. And I don't want to say no to either group, so it's quite... Uh... Tiring? That's all part of the reason why I'm here right now. I kind of escaped from them. Yuzuki, you know you can't please everyone, right? Of course, but still... Next time, just say no to them if you really don't want to. If you don't, people are going to take advantage of you. Ah, oh, I got scolded again. It's easier said than done, but I'll try. There you go. For now, let's just stay here and relax, yeah? Feel free to do whatever you want here. Yes. The mood's gotten a lot better now. Knowing that Yuzuki didn't forget about me is pretty relieving. Ah, oh, Haruta, could I ask you something? What's up? You seem to like that comic. I was wondering what it is. Huh? You don't know? Are you living under a rock or something? Hmm? I guess you're not well versed in pop culture then. Fine, I'll tell you. It's just a detective comic that I've followed since I was little. It tells the story of a high schooler detective who's drugged by this organization and, and became an elementary school student. Oh, I see. Is that why you wanted to become a detective? Huh? How do you know? Th you said so in class during elementary school, didn't you? He remembers? That sounded amazing. But, yeah, but how do you even remember that? That happened like eight years ago. Well, when the teacher told us to tell us about our dreams one by one, nobody was ex as excited as you are. I thought it was impressive how you seem so passionate about your dream. It's clear that it's something you want for yourself. In spite the fact that someone made fun of you afterwards, you should continue to stand firm. I really admire that. Well, I'm glad you, my extreme otaku, <laughs> otaku, otaku phase, inspired you somehow. This might disappoint you, but I've been thinking of giving you that dream up. It's a bit too far-fetched after all. What do you mean? I like detective comics and TV shows, sure, but... I'm no one special, really. My kids are so-so, and while I do can do sports, I absolutely have no idea how to defend myself. I like solving puzzles and riddles, but I'm no genius at it. No matter how hard I try to be better at my studies or whatever I do, the results are always the same. Average. Sorry for the sudden rant. Just forgot I said anything. Hmm? But I'm fine with you ranting about your problems, Haruto. And you're quite the hypocrite, aren't you? Even though you were telling me how imperfection is alright just a few weeks ago, I will admit that, in, that your abilities and setting is rather average. And that normally you don't stand out. You're going straight for the gut, aren't you? Where the hell did that kind and considerate Yuzuki go? Oh, sorry, I've not finished yet. Oh god. 
even if you are just average, it's not as if you have to be someone special to become a detective, right? Huh? The comic you like, it tells the story of a high schooler detective. Do you perhaps feel like you should be like that to be able to become a proper detective? Well, it's unrealistic that it happened, but there you have it. Now, every detective is born a genius, right? And before becoming a detective, you have to learn from scratch, don't you? Yeah? Then as you've said before, that's the point of learning. You're bad at it and learning to become better. While being a genius is nice, if you aren't one, then you don't have to beat yourself up over it. I'm a firm believer that if you're passionate about something, you can always find a way to succeed in the end. And I don't think you're actually willing to give up your dream despite what you said. Ah, so I'm right. With how hard working you are, I believe you can do it, Haruto. I'll be help you I'll help you achieve that dream however I can. Okay, you can stop right there. He didn't make fun of me. Hell, he even encouraged me wholeheartedly this time. Let's first. Thank you, Yuzuki. That means a lot. You're welcome, Haruto. Oh, by the way, about that comment, will it be alright for me to borrow the first volume? Huh? You're interested in it? Yeah, something like that. Let me warn you, we already have a hundred volumes of this. Is it Detective Conan? <laughs> Is it called Conan? That's a lot. But it's alright. And just like that, we've gotten even closer again. Months passed and the blink of an eye, winter came. It's February now. To be more exact, it's Valentine's Day. I've only ever gotten chocolates from my friends, so I don't expect this year's Valentine's Day to be any different. Hey Haruto, speaking of friends, here comes a girl from my class. Hey Hannah, can you can you came here for our yearly chocolate? Oh no, I read that sentence wrong. Hey Hannah, I came here for your yearly chocolate. Duh. Here, I got your favorite. Thanks, and here's your cashew chocolate. Yeah, now this is the good stuff. So how's it going? Got any chocolate from a guy this year? I wish. How about you, Haruto? Oh wait, I don't need to ask. With guys like Yuzuki, Yuzuki and Ichigo, there's no way you're getting one. You're not in the wrong. Hmm, speak of the devil. Look who's coming this way. Oh, hey, Yuzuki. Hello there, you two. And of course, he comes by to us with two handbags, handbags full of chocolate. Show off. Hmm, why are you looking at my chocolate like that? Haruto, are you free right now? Yeah, what's up? Let's go to the usual place together. I can sense my friend's curious eyes looking at me, but I tried to shrug it off and play it cool. Right now? Yes. Ah, oh, seems urgent. Well, sure. I take a look at my friend again and lightly wave at her. See you later. He gives me a wink and an okay gesture before the two of us walks away. So, you seem like you want to talk about something? I'm just curious. Who's that girl you're with? Oh, what's this? Is he interested in her? I'll give him a vague answer to see what he responds with. Her name is Hannah, I see. But, what's your relationship with her? <laughs> oh yeah, he's definitely interested in her. Hannah will freak out when she hears this. We're friends, classmates. Do you want me to introduce you to her? Hmm? I can even take you to her right now if you want. Oh, wait, that's not what I'm saying. Come on, stop being so shy, let me take you to her. Haruto. <laughs> Confess, I'm not interested in her. What, then why'd you even ask me that question? Huh, wait, don't tell me. The one I love is you, Haruto. Are you serious? Yes. Uh, you do know I'm a guy, right? Yes, I do, and I don't mind. That's not the point. What would the others think if they knew you confessed to me? Hell, what would your parents think? Also, we live in a small town, and we could just keep it a secret, right? That's... I do admit that I'm scared of thinking what will happen if we're found out, but I just thought that if I don't do this, I will regret it later. Don't you know that I could go around spreading the fact that you confessed to me to everyone? No one would believe you though, so let's be for real. Now I know you won't do that. You're a good person, Haruto. Are you hearing yourself right now? This is stupid, Yuzuki. Well, love make you, makes you do stupid things after all. You're always so stubborn, aren't you? I really don't get you. Out of anyone else, you just have to fall for me. Why wouldn't I fall for you? You're hardworking? Okay, stop, that's embarrassing. I let out a long sigh. 
Logically, I should reject him and forget this ever happened. It'd be better for the two of us. But despite what I told him, I'm also an idiot. Yuzuki, I like you too? Did you see it again, Haruto? I know you heard me the first time. Ugh, you're so stingy. But I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. A year passed. But why do you give her the dead bird, though? Today is the 1st of February, and it's at that day I stumbled upon something I shouldn't. My legs are numb from running too much, and my heart beats as if it's going to burst out of my chest at any moment. Eventually, I fell down and started vomiting. All this time, I've read many mystery books and watched many mystery TV shows. I never, once I'd be I never thought I'd be witnessing an actual murder happening right before my eyes. The killer is definitely the one behind all these missing people. Hacking and mutilating a body so easy like that? Luckily, I don't think the killer saw me. You better pray he didn't. I'll go to the police tomorrow. I didn't get a good enough evidence, and it's risky. The killer might come, at come for me, but it's better than letting a killer wander around. Someone else might even die if I just stay quiet. It's terrifying, but I have to do what I have to do. I won't let a killer like that get away with it, no matter what. Ninth of February. I reported to the police and told them who did it, but they didn't find anything. The police are useless as usual. Then they told my parents to reprimand me for my disruptive behavior. <sighs> Which means I'll have to get a more reliable evidence. The problem is, I initially thought the killer didn't see me, but I always felt like I'm being watched and followed nowadays. It's starting to feel dangerous, so I don't want to risk it, Anne. Haruto, why, why do you suddenly send me that text? Did something happen? Before I answer him, I look around and check check around to make sure the killer isn't around. I don't know why you guys are just... When I'm completely sure that nobody else is, but us is around, I finally answer him. Yuzuki, I'm sorry, but I can't tell you what actually happened. I decided to leave him in the dark. Otherwise, he might meddle and get involved. If he does, the killer might just go after him too. That's the last thing I want. Please, just stay away from me until the 15th of February. We can meet up then at the station before I go to Tokyo. You really can't tell me, no matter what? Yeah. Sorry, Yuzuki. Then... I'll come with you to Tokyo. Huh? Six days are enough for me to prepare almost everything. So you don't have to worry. What are you saying? Don't do it. You're graduating in only a few months. But so will you. You're right, but for me, it's different. I have something urgent to do, that's why I'll be leaving, but you don't. You leaving is urgent to me, though. You know we can just communicate with our phones, right? But if you're in trouble, then I want to be by your side and help you. But how about your parents? Haruto, I'm sure by now you're aware that I don't feel happy as at home. I'll admit, I've had the thoughts of running away from home, but I can never do it. However, if I'm together with you, I think I'll be able to do it. I'll just be killing two birds with one stone here. I could be by your side and then run away from home. God, you're always so stubborn. Fine, if you want to come with, then I'll let you. Really? Yeah. But I just want you to do three things for me. One, you can't tell anyone that I'll be leaving. If you want to tell someone, then go ahead, just don't bring my name up. Name up. Second, I want you to really think about this. Running away won't be easy. I can always pick you up whenever you're absolutely ready and sure instead. And finally, again, please avoid me for the time being. I'll contact you through our phones instead. Alright, I'll be sure to do that. Still, I don't know what's going on, but please. Always remember that I'll be here if you need me. Yeah. Thanks, Yuzuki. Of course, the same goes to you. Contact me right away if something happens. Something weird is going on. Yet, despite that, at the 14th of February yesterday, Yuzuki suddenly went missing. Went missing. His parents said he hasn't come back home. While his parents went to the police, I decided to head to that girl's house. Oh man, let you go. Going to Tokyo can wait. I need to make sure if Yuzuki is alright first. I don't trust Ichigo, but he might be telling the truth. I guess I'll check it out then. Oh, the hell? I should probably clean things up soon. Yeah, before the police found out, I need to... Suddenly, I feel a vibration inside Yuzuki's pocket. It's Yuzuki's bone. 
It's been vibrating a lot since last night. I guess I should check it out now. There are countless missed calls from his parents, and who the hell is Sweetheart? Did he actually have a lover? Scrolling through the messages beforehand, I found out a few things. Sweetheart is just a contact name for a person called Har Haruto. Yeah, man. That's his lover. Judging from Haruto's profile, he's brown hair, average looking, around our age. I don't know what Yuzuki even sees in him. In the way Yuzuki texts his Haruto, it's like he's infatuated with this Haruto. To the point that they want to run, run away together? I wonder who that is. I get it from my bed, despite how light my head feels. But just before I leave my room, I look at the knife stuck on Yuzuki's lifeless body. Should we take the knife or leave the knife? Uh... Oh, more importantly, I should save. Maybe we should just leave the knife. Once I'm near my front door, I open the door slightly. On the other side of the door is... Sorry to interrupt, but you're Amy, right? There's no mistaking it. He's Haruto. I heard Yuzuki is in here, is that true? Yes. I open the door wide for him to enter. This is all his fault, so I'll show it to him. But instead of walking in, Haruto stares at me. Are you... injured? So what? And Yuzuki is here, you say. Ugh, the smell. And why are there so much blood? No, don't tell me. Ruta must have noticed that something is very wrong as he suddenly bolts off while shouting frantically. Zuki, are you in here? Man, you're supposed to leave. I only close the door behind me before following Haruto's upstairs. When I finally catch up with him in my room, I see him staring at Yuzuki. He stands there, seemingly paralyzed. You... you... did you do this? Yes. Why? What did Yuzuki even do to deserve this? Nothing. What? <laughs> Stop effing around with me. If he's done nothing, then why did you... It's because of you. Huh? I killed him because he'll leave. With you. I wanted to be, to be together with him, but he'll just leave me behind. If only you didn't ask him to leave. No. If only you two never dated in the first place. This would never happen. Yuzuki would still be living, and he would date me instead, so... Stop spreading bullshit. What? Are you trying to make me feel guilty? Too bad I have no reason to. He died because you killed him. Don't you dare put your fingers towards others for what you did. To think, I tried to help you before this. You're no different after all. No, you might even be worse. After punching me, he takes a tape from my desk and starts to tie me up with it. I just let him do it. In the end, he's right. No matter how many times I tried to defend, deny, and delude myself, I'm the one who did the deed. Yuzuki's parents have contacted the police, and thanks to your friend, we know that Yuzuki Ned never left your house. You should be here at any moment now, so don't even think of doing anything funny unless you want a heavier punishment. Sure enough, what he said is true. The police eventually came. I was taken away. Some days passed, or has it been months already? I couldn't tell. In the end, I was sent to juvenile prison. While I was there, an unexpected death arrived to meet me. It was Ichigo. Hi, Amy. Ichigo. I'm sorry it took me this long to visit you. I just... I never expected you to... No, sorry. That's not why I came here today. What I'm trying to say is, I'll wait for you. Huh? Ichigo, what are you saying? I said I'll wait for you. I've killed a person, though. Despite what you did, I still welcome you even when you're released. Man, I knew this one was crazy. I'll take you back to our favorite places. We'll eat tons of delicious sweets like we used to. Until that time comes, I'll wait and visit you every day, okay? I'll make sure to visit you so often that you get tired of seeing my face. <sighs> Both of you two assume that I'm not already tired of seeing your face already. Ah, so you can still joke around like that. That's relieving. I'm glad. Oh, sorry for not being able to stay here for as long, Amy. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Good ending. Second chance. <laughs> okay. She really killed someone. I guess she has abandonment issues since... 
Maybe due to her parents, because her parents are not home all the time. It's, it's implied that they're not home all the time, so she's just really, really lonely. And she doesn't have many friends to begin with, so she's just lonely. And her, um, I mean, Yuzuki, like, I don't know, she just deluded herself into thinking that he loved her like that. Uh, him, like, running away meant that, well, she's gonna be alone forever, even though she had each dog with her. So bad for Yuzuki. He should never went to that house. Alright, okay, let's take the knife. All to taking the knife will mean that we <laughs> end up killing Haruto. Just to be safe, I decided to take the knife with me. Once I'm near my front door, I open the door slightly. It's Haruto. Oh, poor Haruto. He should have never ran into the house. Okay, that's rendered. getting stabbed. Oh, did you not see the knife? You let your guard down. Ugh. After he fell to the ground, they pulled the knife from his neck, causing him to lose a significant amount of blood. He twitches and writhes in pain for a short while, until he stops. That makes it two now. Before I could do anything, I hear a commotion outside. Ah, it seems that the police are came already. You know what? I'll say it all out loud. Oh, I guess this is it then. My mom and dad are right. I am a monster. Oh. The only way I can atone for now for this will be to... Amy. Ugh, Amy, I... It's my fault. If only I kept you from confessing. If only I checked sooner. Nothing matters now. Without Amy, I'd rather... Oh. Why? Uh-uh. Oh my god. Bad end four. Until none is left. Oh my god. I feel like he did... What was his name? Ichigo. I feel like he did it on purpose. Like, he let it be known that... Uh, to Haruto, where Yuzuki was, so he can have Amy all to himself. Like, basically... Having her rely on him and no one else, just like that. <laughs> God, it's just it's like such a such a dark turn. <sighs> Let's open the window for ourselves. No, it's fine. Let me open it myself. I get up from my bed again, heading towards the window. When I open it, a gust of cold wind enters the room. Right, it's still winter. I just stare outside for a while. Then, before I knew it, I was already falling down. Oh. Oh my. Uh, it seems that this is it for me. Even though I looked up, I couldn't see Yuzuki anywhere. Yuzuki. No, that's right. Of course he's not here. He's already... Oh, so that's from the guilt, probably. Bad into guilt. And now, instead of facing the truth, we're just gonna run away. I don't know what you're talking about. Of course you don't. Come on. Wipe that frown from your face. From now on, I'll never mention anything about the truth anymore. I love you, Amy. Let's be together forever from now on. Yes. That's it? We're gonna live in del our delusion? Living in delusions, for real. <laughs> Alright, so... So that's the end of Sweetest Valentine for Yuki's Brute. 
Um, Ichigo's root. Oh my god. Ichigo, Ichigo root seems like a crazy person, so I know it's going to be crazy at the end. So yeah, I'll play Ichigo's root next. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Bye!